why I think allowing people to visit or enter democratic nations from countries that have authoritarian governments could lead to unforeseen positive results. Welcome to Four Seas One Family. <laughs> Sees one family where we share thoughts and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. I am still amazed by the high number of well-connected, often influential, and powerful people in China, many of whom who are high-ranking Chinese Communist Party officials and those who have connections because of their Chinese Communist Party membership who are sending their children abroad to Western nations for educational advancements and opportunities. They obviously want their children to get a good education in environments that can help them further enhance their abilities that would enable them to cement a position in Chinese society and help them become well-rounded, intellectually informed individuals in Western cultures as well. This train of thought is just a natural reaction that takes place in the mind of any individual or group that is taking actions to relocate to another nation that has a very different culture, political system, and environment, which may have an irreversible effect on those involved, especially on the young developing minds. According to a report from a well-known Chinese wealth research firm, more than a third of well-connected, affluent individuals and families in China are considering or have already moved or immigrated to a Western nation to not only gain access to better financial opportunities, but also for advanced progressive educational opportunities for their children. And from a cultural point of view, the truth is most well-connected and affluent individuals and families in China are expected to do this for their children and even their grandchildren because in their culture, their children are regarded as the gate holders and the caretakers of their legacy. However, for many, their primary goal is to fill China's environmental issues, strict government controls, and most importantly, to move and build a buffer that would help them protect the wealth they had acquired in China. It is also true that many of these well-connected and affluent individuals and families have clear and focused objectives while planning to move or live abroad. And many of these practices of maintaining a group focus is something people from other nations and cultures should themselves learn how to emulate. Also, and again to no surprise, many in China who send their children and grandchildren abroad to study hope that their offspring will be able to one day obtain permanent residency or even dual citizenship in a Western nation. And in some situations, and even to the astonishment of those who are already naturalized citizens of a democratic Western country, their move isn't to take advantage of any Western social service. Most of their aspirations focus on enabling financial privileges and protections in the West that would once again permit them to enhance individual family members' positions and opportunities, which is precisely what most families anywhere would want to see created for their immediate or extended family members. And to be honest, I don't blame them for wanting to do so. I would probably want to do the same thing if I were in their shoes. Now, after listening to what I just outlined, regardless of their true motives, whether nefarious or not, there may be some unforeseen ripple effects that occur while engaging in some endeavors that, well, create conflicting points of views and opinions for those involved. So it shouldn't be a surprise that when children of high-ranking, well-connected people in China go abroad for education, they begin to acquire insights into themselves and start making social and cultural comparisons between the Western culture they are being educated in and their birth nation. And, in, and if left on their own, many of the young minds from nations like China who were sent to Western nations to study become quite adept at comparing both the positive and negative aspects of the systems and cultures they were educated in. And for some, this brings some revelations that may cause them to have personal, internal, social, cultural, and for some even political struggles. 
many of these young minds gain unfiltered views into Western culture and educational institutions, which allows them to be introduced to ways of thinking that may be unpalatable to those who sent them overseas to study. Now, remember, some even hope that their children could obtain dual citizenship in Western nations that will allow their children uh, to open a gateway for them to participate in the freedoms they don't have or didn't have while living in China. And the list of high-ranking Chinese Communist Party-connected individuals who send their children and grandchildren abroad for higher learning is long and goes way back many years and is seen as something that is just, just normal to do. You see, it appears that immigration departments and officials in Western cultures cannot detect or comprehend how many foreign nationals who have close financial, philosophical, and political ties to countries like China are planning or may have already immigrated to their nation to take advantage of the freedoms, rights, and protections available to naturalized citizens. And many observers would flat out say that some Western democratic nations can't see how they, their naivety is just like them shooting themselves in the foot. And this is a subject that I will dive into more deeply in a future episode. The truth is, many foreign nationals who have immigrated, not only from nations like China, do not hold democratic countries in high regard for many social, political, philosophical, and even religious reasons. Now, many have primarily immigrated to democratic Western nations to pursue their ambitions. And as I hinted earlier, many of these ambitions are camouflaged to pursue their personal and in some cases, nefarious motives, which from their perspective may be just a natural thing to do to ensure their self-reliance. Many of them have most likely grown up in environments and educational systems that taught them to have and maintain a high philosophical and political allegiance to their mother nation, which depict Western nations as adversaries that are inherently corrupt, immoral, and void of moral beliefs and concepts. I would like you to perceive what I presented as a background to what I really want to point out. I would like to use what I just said as a support structure for my continuing comments to stress how many of those educated in democratic nations from countries like China, for example, have used their overseas experience for social change in the Western world and hopefully in their country as well. Now, this list is quite long, but at this particular time, I would like to focus on one specific person of interest, and her name is Chloe Zhao. Chloe Zhao, uh, Zhao Ting is from Beijing. Now, she was sent to study in the United Kingdom in a boarding school at an early age. She ended up in my hometown, New York City, to study film and finally Los Angeles to continue her film career. Chloe Zhao, Zhao Ting built a name for herself by directing independent films that showed close and relevant relationships between people in the West. Her stories personalized the lives of characters in a film in simple terms without hyperbole. Now, this may have been the result of how she had lived her personal life abroad as an outsider in nations among people who weren't familiar with people who looked or sounded like her. Now, after winning the prestigious 78th Golden Globe Award in March 2020, she became the first woman of Asian descent to win the Best Director Award, which prompted the Chinese Communist Party tabloid Global Times called Zhao the pride of China in its headline. However, her tidal wave of fame in China began to hit low tides after a 2013 interview was discovered online that quoted Zhao describing her birth nation as a place where lies are everywhere. And literally overnight, media outlets in China at all levels canceled Chloe Zhao. The government ordered all media outlets to suppress any news related to her win. All articles and postings that previously amplified her as a Chinese national treasure were erased, bleached, and in some cases weaponized to express national displeasure. However, Chloe Zhao's name remained internationally resilient due to her winning of the 2020 Academy Awards for Best Director, among others, and for the movie Nomadland. 
The movie centers on the personal lives of people who live and travel in mobile homes across the United States within the limits of their diminishing health and financial conditions. Nomadland focused on the possible reasons why people choose to live their lives in such ways, but at the same time achieve personal nirvana within disparaging and heartbreaking circumstances. Chloe Chow's accomplishments, along with her movies, are clear examples of how people in nations that allow free thought aren't subjugated to laws, rules, and regulations that suppress opposing opinions and viewpoints. This also shows how creative people in democratic nations are allowed to peacefully formulate their opinions in public that may not always be flattering, but become relevant for their positive constructs that may lead to positive developments. The news of nomad land receiving such high international honors perplexes people who live under authoritarian governments because they cannot phantom how a movie that shows the disparaging lives of people in a powerful nation can be allowed to be filmed and presented to the world. And this may be exactly why leaders of authoritarian nations that employ draconian measures around the clock subdue the free thought in their country that may weaken their grip on the people and the government they control. Chloe Zhao and others with similar backgrounds have taken what they have learned to better themselves and create a positive direction for the whole world to follow. And in some aspects, pointed out situations the world must not frolic in. Most importantly, I hope you understand that the comments I presented were not created to engage in any personal attacks towards those who came to democratic nations to further their education, gain freedoms, or even protect their personal assets. I'm making this comment to point out that I'm against all abusive and violent attacks currently taking place towards people of Asian descent, mainly in democratic Western nations. I hope that I'm making this point clear and 100% unambiguous. My comments are directed at forming a way of thinking that would allow those from authoritarian nations like China to, at the very least, visit democratic Western cultures, which are in no way perfect, and learn the best aspects and practices there are available. And at the same time, inform people who are citizens of democratic nations that they need to cherish and protect the privileges and freedoms they are fortunate to have. In the end, Citizens of democratic nations must learn how to overcome or lessen their own internal, national, and political conflicts. After receiving her Academy Award for Best Director for the movie Nomadland, Joey Chow presented a very popular three-word Chinese classic, Ren Zhi Chu Xing Ben Shan, which closely translates as, at birth, man is fundamentally good in nature. I also hope that citizens of democratic nations can, as one famous social scientist says, clean up their rooms. If you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to take care, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.